Well, howdy everybody. Um, it is Friday evening. Hello, hello, hello. Um, I am just um, enjoying some quiet time at my studio and working on one of the projects I started. Oh gosh, I guess I started it last night. Time flies. Uh, feels like two days ago instead of just one day ago. And I thought I would just um, bring you guys in and let you see what I'm working on because I'm still playing with my um, signs, okay, that I did some painting on yesterday. And everything is dry and ready for the next layer. So I thought it'd be fun if um, anybody else was bored and ha didn't have anything else to do this evening uh, that you guys can join me and um, see what I'm doing so I can share this with you. And I see there's a few people, if you guys would, um, you know, just say hi. Hey, Christina, it's good to see you. Uh, Marsha's here from Kentucky. Awesome. Uh, but yeah, just go ahead and type in something and just say hello and happy Friday night, cheers, whatever. Uh, but um, I'm going to go forward with these um, on some ideas I have in my head. And, you know, that's always one of those things where. You know, you think of things, you got some great ideas, you're, you're you know, hoping that they come out okay, and, you know, hopefully they do, because I'm doing this on live. Like, I don't practice any of this stuff that I, I think I want to try. Uh, so it's always fun to do that. Um, okay, so I have my coffee cup here, you guys, just because I didn't have a wine glass, and it is Friday night, and I decided it was okay to um, have a little bit. There's only about that much in there, okay? So just a little bit of wine. But uh, I thought, okay, just relax, enjoy my evening here a little bit. Uh, so why am I here on a Friday night? Okay, I, I would want to know too. Okay, my boyfriend's working overtime. I got one son at an Angels game. And I'm not sure what the other one's doing, but I haven't heard anything. So uh, obviously he's fine. Um, and if you don't know me well, okay, we have six kids together. And these kids range age ranges are from 26 to 18 so they're not really kids anymore but they'll always be our kids uh, so they're pretty self-efficient and do their own thing and we only have two of them that live with us so there's not much to worry about these days and that's the the 24 and the 18 year old okay uh, so thank you guys for um, coming on over here and dropping in and joining me uh, yes Jennifer happy Friday I'm so excited I get to see you again here soon. Um, she's going to join me at the General Finishes Convention and I think the Penner's Convention in Dallas and the Penner's Convention in Arizona. So I am excited. Jennifer is one of my retailers in um, Nashville area. Um, and I love Nashville. I got my heart in Nashville because both of them, I've got two of my own kids in Nashville, okay? So I love that place. Okay, so um, what I'm gonna do is Last night, I painted three of these, and you can see this one looks like it's wet or we've already got some coloration uh, difference, but you know, these were just some pine um, boards, okay, that I had cut into um, two, two foot lengths, okay, and I think they're about five inches tall. And obviously, something is just bleeding through the tannins or whatever so to me that is freebie shading okay i'm not going to fight it i'm going with it um and you know it's just an extra bonus of a little bit of color value so i love it um <laughs> oh thank you darlene for sharing my video i appreciate all the shares you guys it allows maybe somebody else to find me and see what i'm doing so please share with your creative friends that would be awesome so the first thing i want to do at this point is I want to do a little bit of uh, dry brushing and create more color values and some different uh, shades going on here. Um, and I'm working, okay, let me kind of show you guys. I think I can show you my table here, okay? Okay, all my mess behind me. Um, I've got a collection of the DIY paints here, and these are by um, Debbie's Design Diary. And I know there's a trick on here to, um, switch the camera so that you guys can read this but i haven't figured out how to switch it yet so that's on my to-do list okay so that it's not backwards to you guys um i think that'd be awesome so eventually i'll figure that out okay but um if you can't read backwards it's diy paints 
and I know a lot of people asked last night to find the paint on my website and um, we're just getting this loaded on there because I had carried another paint and we finally are almost completely out of the other paint so now we're going to put the DIY on our shopping cart. Hello, Michelle. Michelle, I know, was on here last night with me, so it's awesome to see you back. Okay, I'm just popping um, a bunch of lids here, you guys, and getting these open so that I can play with some color and um, do some fun dry brushing. And I'm still working about with that same palette that I had uh, last night. Um, I'm bringing over palm or prom cream. Oh, let's see if we can speak here. You guys are really think I have been drinking. Prom queen, okay, is one of the colors I wasn't using last night. And I think I also grabbed a red um, and a little bit of some old 57, okay. So I'm just going to have some fun with some dry brushing. Uh, I just want to have the... Um, background have some interest and some fun colors and then I'm still planning on using one of the um, stamping rollers and I got a bunch out and once I have the background with a bunch of interest and color and just kind of distressed looking I think I'm going to use um, I think this is black velvet okay I think I'm going to use the black velvet coming across um, with the, um, the roller design because I want the roller to be really close, um, more in a tone on tone, and there was really no other blue that was close enough, so I figured I might as well just go for the black because I want everything I'm doing to kind of be in the background and the interest, and then I'm gonna come in here with some fun, uh, some stencils I have, uh, some words, I think it was hope, love, joy, um, and uh, I want the words to pop out. So everything else I'm doing is kind of like just your background, and then I really want the words to pop off of the, the sign. So that's my, my concept. Okay, we'll see how well this all works. And hello, Patricia. Thanks for joining us from North Carolina there. Okay, so I'm going to probably have to move my camera a little bit once I get going, but I have this um, great assortment of colors here, you guys. And um, this is just going to be my palette of what I'm going to work with. And let's grab some paper towels. I so appreciate you guys taking time on your Friday evening and joining me for a little painting fun. Um, like I said last night, you know, it's nice to, um, as you're doing things here and I'm, I'm just being creative, to be able to uh, share that with you guys and um, share the techniques. So I love having this time where we can go live and just share instead of just sitting here and painting by myself. Now, if I was painting by myself, I'll guarantee you um, the music would be cranked up, okay? Uh, there is some country music on over in the corner, but I've kept it pretty low so <laughs> you guys could actually hear me talk instead of just hearing my, my music. Hi, Kathy. I'm so glad you could join us. Kathy is one of my retailers from um, Arizona area, Tucson, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong. And okay, so less talking and more get going here. Yeah, like I said, I really don't have, you know, any idea how this is going to turn out, but I am just going to go ahead and grab some of the colors that I just love. Excuse my reach here and my head in the middle of the screen. Um, looking for a foam plate here to work off of. And I recycle my foam plates, you guys. Okay, so most of my foam plates are um, dirty. Some of them are stuck together. And uh, I just use them again, okay? So um, I hate that I'm using foam because foam is not like uh, environmentally friendly, but if you recycle your foam plates like I do, I don't think it's so bad, okay? So when I'm dry brushing, uh, I'm going to uh, put some of the paint onto the palette, and if I'm really wanting to be extremely dry and, and ex you know, into the extreme control, okay, to call me a little control freak here, that's okay, I'm also going to wipe it off on a paper towel because the drier the brush actually is, the more in control of where the paint is going to go. Uh, so I'm going to then just come in and hit some of my edges 
and this color is going to just like pick up the texture and the tone on these are pretty darn close so um, this is mermaid tail which as it's starting to dry let me see if you guys can see that as it's starting to dry you can see a little bit of color difference as it's wet you can almost barely see it but that's kind of fun is to use colors that don't always have a lot of contrast but you're just able to create some um, some fun interesting texture for the background so I'm going to go ahead and add this color um, probably around the edges and pick up some of the texture and you know this is just uh, some pine like boards so there's so much I mean they're rough okay there's nothing like smooth about this wood I just thought this would be um, some fun kind of rustic looking signs so I wasn't going for any kind of nice you know smooth um, or expensive wood this was pretty cheap okay but you know sometimes you want that more rustic feel instead of having to get out um, you know my tools and bang this up it already has that character to it so I'm just kind of going with it so guys as you're all like joining me and I appreciate all of you guys doing that um, where uh, what are you guys all like doing tonight okay instead of just um, I mean, is there something you guys are doing is it still early enough that you just haven't gone out you know Friday night uh, or anybody out there joining me with a glass of wine or a nice cold beer uh, <laughs> So well, you guys gotta be doing something fun other than just coming on here watching Jennifer doing some painting, okay? Well, hello, Ann. Nice to see you. Hey, we still need to chat, okay? <laughs> Ann is hopefully. I guess can I can I um, can I like release this information, Ann? That Ann might become one of my retailers. So I'm really excited about that. We haven't like talked details yet, but she's inquired, so hopefully, hopefully she will um, come on board. <laughs> okay, so hopefully you guys can also see what I'm doing as it's drying here. You can see all the coloration that we're getting. Ah, absolutely, that is so exciting. So yes, Anne is going to come, become one of my retailers. Um, so if you guys are looking for um, any of my retailers and I mean I've got them all over the United States I have three in Canada I have one in New Zealand I have one in Sri Lanka um, and we've got somebody inquiring to do Europe uh, so we're excited I mean it's just neat to be able to find uh, great retailers around the world that are interested in carrying your product and making it more available so that's just that's just awesome Okay, so as this is drying, because I'm working with, um, like I said, the Debbie's Design Diary DIY paints, and um, just guys, be patient with me. This putting these paints online on my website is like my webmaster's next project. Okay, so uh, it might take her a few more weeks, but if you're interested in ordering any of them, just give us a phone call, and we'd be more than happy to help you. Okay, I'm going to pull this up for a second. I just want to read what Jennifer wrote. So she says she's relaxing at home. Just got back from a meeting in Chattanooga. I'm going to start some painting, um, a, small tonight, oh, a small night sand uh, with some general finishes, lap, black, lamp black, and some uh, silver foil. Okay, that's a great finish, okay? So Jennifer, make sure that you share that project when you're done because uh, the black base with silver foil is such a stunning stunning finish um, let's see ah so Anne is already spreading the word a little bit it sounds like that she's telling people she's coming on board so now that we said that publicly I gotta hold you to it let's see I'm gonna read another question here is that another version of the paint wax brushes that you were talking about last night um, okay, those are uh, the, the wash brushes. This actually, 
is a great brush for, okay, I'm shaking it here. I guess I don't need to shake it. I talk with my hands sometimes, you guys. Uh, this is a great brush for doing dry brushing. And thanks for asking that, Robin. Sometimes I just start doing things and I don't even think that you guys might not know what I'm using here. Uh, these are, let me get a dry one here so I can put my hands all over it. The bristles are stiff, okay? So they're more of the hair uh, stiffness of a stencil brush, but they're in a flat domed shape and they make great brushes for doing dry brushing. Because if you tried to use the um, nice soft wash brushes I was using last night, these are harder to get a, a dry brush from because I really, really um, get my brush dry so that I'm using it with a lot more pressure and that would beat this up and not do a really good job. If you, um, I don't think I have these on the website, but you can always call anything I'm showing you guys that I'm working with. We most likely sell because um, I've got a retail store here, but um, we're just a little behind on getting everything on the website. Uh, I love my webmaster and she, she does it part time, okay? So I just have to be patient. But um, anything that I'm using, and you're interested in, just give us a call. We'll help you out. Uh, I think these brushes run between like four to ten dollars, just depending on the size. So they're really inexpensive. Uh, Rochelle is on here. I'm so excited to see you. Um, if you don't have or don't want to buy um, these round dome brushes for the dry brushing, another source to use. Um, are some of my older chip brushes, okay? These things are worn down. They should actually be probably at least that long, okay? So maybe they're about half the length that they used to be. And I didn't cut them off, you guys. I wore them down, okay? That's how old or how much work and miles of painting they have on them. So these are very seasoned brushes. Uh, and this one here, Obviously, there was something I was scrubbing that was at an angle, and this whole brush has a whole new personality to it, okay? Um, but because they are so worn down, they're stiffer, and they are also great for dry brush. So you want a brush that has um, a bristle that's definitely stiffer um, than just an art wash brush. So thank you so much for asking that question, Rochelle. I miss you, too. Um, okay, so I'm going to go back here to some painting, you guys, so I don't bore you to death. And um, I think I want to add just a little bit more because now that it's drying, okay, and I'm hoping you can see this really well, I can kind of tell where all that color is and decide if I want to add more. So carrying on a conversation with you guys is really good because then I can determine um, how much more of this color I want to see before I move on to another color. And I am going to move on to another color now. So I'm going to put that brush aside. And let's see, which one do I want? I think I want to just tip in a little bit of red. So I'm going to do that next because I, if I don't like the red, I can bury it a little bit, okay? And that's one of those fun things that, you know, being in um, a chalk style paint, okay, uh, you have that ability to erase a mistake. And I love that, okay? I just absolutely love the fact that, you know, you can go back and erase. And that's because you can activate and wipe off a layer with just water. Water and cheesecloth are my favorite two things to um, use if I decide I want to take off a little bit of color. Ooh, I hope you guys can see this. Okay, I'm going to stick this up there. Um, but I love how the red is on there. Okay, just tipping it a little bit. And I'm not going to do too much of the red, but I like that color in the background. I think that's going to be awesome. And one of the reasons I'm using the red right now is because I do want to push it back so it'll be a background color. So if I um, layer more colors over the top, this one's going to kind of continue to be pushed into the background instead of being on the top. And a little red and blue kind of almost gives um, a little bit of a purple hue. Um, if you get into your uh, color wheel, um, if you're not sure what colors make other colors, um, you guys can buy like a, I don't know, maybe a $5 or $3 um, color wheel, and which is awesome because it will help you with knowing what colors go together, your complementary colors, your... Um, 
you know, all those technical things, okay? Uh, knowing uh, what color is opposite on the wheel and how they look together. Um, it also tells you what colors mixed together are going to give you another color if you don't know. Uh, and maybe you all know that, but um, color wheels are great. There's a lot of great information. But some of that stuff I just kind of, I know, okay, and I just, I couldn't tell you the technical reason for it, but it's just, I know color, okay? Um, sometimes we've been given certain gifts in life, okay? Uh, my mother is um, extremely gifted in um, music and art. Uh, she never went forward with her um, artistic talent, but she has been um, playing different instruments and directing choirs and choruses and teaching and all this for my entire life. Um, I remember as a little girl, we got pictures of me. I might have been, I don't know, three or maybe two or three, holding onto her leg as she's directing the choir because I was so shy uh, that I just wrap my arms around her leg and hold onto her while she directed. Um, now she is a wonderful 80 years young, okay, and still rocking the trumpet, okay. She plays on a small group in... Um, she plays in the area she lives in. She lives in um, Cambria, and I think she plays in Cayucas. I don't know if they go to Morro Bay, but I mean, I love it that she's still doing all this stuff. I think it keeps her young, okay? But um, I didn't get that talent, you guys. I really didn't. Um, so last night, I told you guys we were going to go out and meet some friends and listen to some music. Oh, my gosh. This gal uh, was incredible. I was mesmerized. Um, she was playing the violin. And I could have sat there and watched her for hours. I was just um, enthralled with her ability to play. And I'm thinking, oh, why did you give that up, okay? I tried a few instruments that just wasn't my gift. My, my mother just, I think, cringed every time I tried to play. Okay, so I'm kind of letting the red dry a little bit so that we can move on to another color. So I want to, hopefully you guys can see the color values that I've got going on this and how kind of fun that is just to dry brush some color in and have something that has a lot of interest, okay? Uh, so for any of those that are just joining, um, I'm just playing with some dry brush techniques and bringing in this fun color palette uh, to get some background color. And yes, I'm drinking wine out of my coffee cup because we don't have wine glasses at the studio for good reasons, okay? Okay, so I think I've got enough of the red. And let's see, I don't know which direction I want to go. I don't want to go too light. Um, but I think, I think, I think, I think, I think I want to see a little bit of the sea glass. And maybe even a little bit of the old 57, okay? Now, I'm dipping a dirty brush in there, which is probably not the best idea that I should ever tell you guys to do, okay? Because you're definitely going to contaminate your colors. But I've got both of them on here. So with the one that's drying here with the mermaid, this one is sea glass, and over here is old 57. Um, so these will definitely be a little bit lighter, but add some some fun, fun contrast. And you can layer them right over the top. And just, when you dry brush and you're really, really dry, you can rub back and forth pretty vigorously, okay? And all I'm doing is catching all the texture on there. And I hope you can see that. Um, so you can definitely tell how textured this wood is and it's bringing all that out. And like I said, the drier you keep your brush, um, the more you can control uh, the technique. So you can see I'm wiping off on my paper towel and just going back and forth. And if I do anything that I'm just not happy about, I have a water bottle, <laughs> a spray bottle full of water, and I can grab some cheesecloth, and I can make almost anything disappear, okay? Oh, I'm not worried about it, but I wanted to bring out, like I said, I'm, I'm going for a rustic look, so I'm wanting to bring out the texture of the wood, and with dry brush, you definitely can. It brings out, <laughs> it highlights all the imperfections, okay? 
um, Margo, the color I started with was um, Hey Sailor, okay, which is a luscious, beautiful blue, kind of like an indigo blue. So that's my base coat, and that was painted on um, last night. So that was already dried and dried overnight, and now I'm just coming in and I'm highlighting all the imperfections of the wood and just bringing out all these beautiful colors, okay? Um, so that's, that's what I'm going for right now. And I'm intentionally, I mean, I'm going to uh, most likely wax and do a dark wax, which will deepen everything too in the end. Ah, oh, Kelly is joining me. Oh, Kelly, you are just a diehard tonight. Kelly just got finished with doing a live tonight, working on a coffee table that she did with my ostrich roller. And it was the first time she actually used the ostrich roller and she rocked it. It's gorgeous. So you guys need to go over there. Uh, Kelly, make sure you put your... Um, link to your Facebook business page on here so that everybody can go over to your page and see what you did tonight because um, it's just beautiful and then um, I'm actually going to post her video she did the night before um, when she showed how she used it because Kelly did a couple things different than I do which I think is awesome because it shows that there's so many different ways to um, use the rollers. And she brushed on the texture medium, and you guys know me, um, I'm always grabbing my trowel. So um, it's nice to see that she brushed it on, how easy and manageable it was. Um, it was just awesome. So thank you so much for checking those out, Kelly. It was fun to watch you. Uh, so. I'm just kind of playing with my color, and like I said, if there's something I'm not happy about, I, make, I can make it disappear. Um, I've got some of these stop marks, okay, those are from my dry brush, like reversing, okay, hitting and reversing, and I think those are pretty cool that um, it just kind of, again, gives that rustic um, kind of look in the background. It's funny, when I look at the screen, it looks like this is so, so bright, but when I'm looking at it here, it's kind of just blending in. Um, so maybe I'll balance it on the other side. Okay, I want to read some of you guys' questions here, so I'm going to uh, see if I can back up my screen and scroll here. Okay, good. Kelly put her link on. So when you guys are done watching me, don't go over there now, okay? you got to wait till you're done watching me and um, go watch her video. Um, oh, okay, somebody was actually just talking to Kelly. That's awesome. Okay, and... We've got somebody just joined. What are you painting? Okay, Kay, I am just making some fun, rustic signs. Uh, I've got three conferences coming up, um, and I am doing some fun signs for the booth just to show people different techniques and uh, our rollers and what you can do with them. I mean, I've got tons of sample boards that always um, show everybody uh, you know, the technique actually, you know, done on just a sample board, but I think it's so much fun to see it executed um, on a project. So I'm trying to get some of these signs done so that we'll have them at the, uh, I'm not going to take them, I think, to the general finishes, not unless I can shove one in my suitcase, okay? Um, but if I, uh, they'll definitely be at the, um, the Penner's Convention, so they'll be in the booth in Dallas and Arizona. So that's kind of what I'm playing with. And if you guys have questions, feel free to ask. Um, oh, I wish you too could, Kelly. It would be so nice. Okay, I gotta keep my finger, I'm gonna keep moving my fingers right in the middle of everything, okay? Okay, so I'm just trying to see if I, what things I'm missing. And Kelly, you gotta teach me that trick that you were able to flip the, um, the camera so that people could read. Okay, this was a trick I saw Kelly do tonight because everything here on my screen is backwards to you guys and you can't read that. So Kelly has got to tr teach me the trick. Um, okay, so Tina's asking about the brush. So, sorry guys, I'm gonna repeat myself really quick. It is what's called a domed um, brush, okay? And they're stiff. 
and they allow you to do the dry brushing technique way better than a regular brush. Um, and I was telling everybody, um, I don't think we have them on the website, but you guys can definitely um, give me a call if you're interested in them and um, pick up one or two. They're, to me, relatively inexpensive. Okay, just like Kelly, okay, I thought I had everything here, but again, I have to step away from the camera because I don't have any cheesecloth right there, okay? So I gotta go grab some cheesecloth. And, you know, I always try to have everything I need laid out, but sometimes we just, we just forget, okay? It's so easy to forget one or two things. Okay, um, I'm going to do uh, just a little wet distressing and blend a little bit if there's something I'm not happy about. Um, and I do feel like just because sometimes it's fun to be able to see things in a camera versus being able to see it when you're just looking at it. And a really good thing for you guys to do is if you're trying to critique your project, instead of just looking at it like this, okay, holding it up and looking at it and trying to critique how you feel about it, take a picture of it and look at the picture on the camera. It's amazing how you will see things so differently than you do when you're just looking at them. So that's a trick that I learned many, many years ago. Um, okay, I'm not using what I call a chalkboard paint. I'm using chalk style paints. And um, let me grab another one. This one's empty, almost. Uh, this is the DIY Paints by Debbie's Design Diary. And it is a mineral and chalk and clay based paint. It's mainly clay. Um, they're wonderful to work with. Uh, so uh, definitely check them out. Um, like I said, I don't have them on my website yet, but we will be loading them up as soon as my webmaster is done with her current project, which she's, she's working on the foils right now, and I'm not gonna disturb her because she's getting the foils all organized and working on that page so that everything is easy to navigate, okay? So I'm not gonna bother her while she's working on that, but as soon as she's done with the foils, um, then I'm going to have her move on uh, to adding all the, to adding the entire DIY line to um, my website. So I'm excited about that, but, <laughs> oh, excuse me. It will be weeks, okay, obviously weeks. None of that stuff happens that quick. Uh, it just takes so much time uh, to get everything loaded on there. Okay, so I just did a little bit. I just uh, sprayed my um, cheesecloth. I like using cheesecloth because it's got a great texture and um, it's actually not just uh, cheesecloth. This is called wimple cloth and it has the least amount of sh uh, shedding, okay, where it doesn't leave a lot of fibers behind, which is wonderful when you're using it. You don't have to go back and pick out the lint. Uh, but I love to use this because, um, because of the texture of the, um, the wimple cloth, it rubs for you so you don't have to work really hard and I'm just using uh, water in my spray bottle giving a little squirt so it's not soaked okay so I got a little bit of water, water to work with and then as you get it wet you can pull off as much color as you would like okay so I could pull this all the way down to the raw wood so I'm being very careful because I really don't want to okay uh, I want to leave um, a lot of the color but I'm just kind of blending over things and softening them a little bit and you can see I'm not pulling off a lot of color. There's very little that's coming off. Um, but just a little bit of blending. And then I'm gonna put this one aside for a minute and let that dry because anytime you are working with a chalk type paint, you wanna let everything dry before you go to the next layer. So um, make sure you let this dry before you do another technique. And again, you guys, I see that there's been a couple of shares, and I just want to again say thank you guys. I appreciate that. Okay, this one here is painted in the um, mermaid tail, and I am going to do some dry brushing on this one. I think I want to start, ooh, which way do I want to start? Well, no, dark, light. Okay, let's do some old 57. 
And I think I'm going to put the lid on a couple of these that I'm not going to use right now. Just so I'm not sitting here with all of this open, okay? I'm letting things dry out. I have a tendency to open everything and just let it sit, and that's not always a good idea. And, okay, so I'm going to pull out the old 57, and I think I'm going to use quite a bit of this. And on this one here, I've kind of thought about the same, um, the same kind of look as far as um, doing a tone on tone because again, I really want to use um, a couple of my stencils and let the words be the focal point um, Okay, so the paints really dry on here and because it is like a, a clay based paint um, some of it's actually just clumping up and um, coming <laughs> just kind of gathering up the edge Oh Yes, Kelly, I use a blow dryer when I'm really in a hurry to let uh, to get things to dry. Um, one of the ones I'm working on is sitting on front of a fan across the room. Um, so that one is drying too because uh, I've got three of them going here all with paint. And then I still have two other signs that I'm going to start with texture like you did, Kelly, uh, where I'm going to actually use the texture medium and um, create the background with one of the rollers and the texture medium so there'll be a pattern, a textured pattern all in the background and then layer on top of that. So there's just so many ways that you can use the rollers. Um, I mean, they're just so fun. And Kelly's going to find, I know she's just used her first one this week. I hate to tell you, Kelly, they are addicting, okay? They are truly, truly addicting. They are so much fun to work with. I always try to figure out how I can incorporate them into almost every project that I do. So you're going to find that you're going to be pulling them out for a lot of stuff. Okay, so I'm just trying to get this um, old 57 in the background and highlighting, highlighting all the imperfections of this piece of wood. And that's all you're basically doing when you come back and your dry brushing is it tends to highlight all the imperfections. Um, so Kelly's talking about my texture medium that it looks like marshmallow. It's really um, fluffy. It's like a, a, a thick, thick marshmallow, marshmallowy cream, but it works so good. And um, I love the fact that you brushed it on. That is so awesome because I always, always just go grab my trowel. I think it's just out of habit. But I think sometimes for beginners and some people not owning a trowel or being scared to even use a trowel, um, it's so great that you showed them how easy it was just to brush it on and um, get great results. So I'm even going to try it out on one of the signs that I'm going to do and um, see how, how, how much I love brushing it on, okay? Yeah, you know, it's just... One of those things I think I'm just such a habit of you know doing it one way got to get out of that habit and show people there's more than one way to do things so that's awesome and like I said I'm going to share um, Kelly's video um, on my on my business page too I just haven't had a chance I finally got to watch it tonight and um, sometimes you just have those days where you thought you were going to do a lot and get a lot accomplished and all I did was run errands today, okay? I mean, I, I didn't even get into the studio until like 12.30, 1 o'clock. And then I had to go run out again at 3 o'clock and go run another errand. So I, I, I didn't spend more than, I think, three hours here during regular business hours today. It was just one of those days. But all my errands got done. I got everything off that list. That's always good to accomplish. Okay, so I'm going to hold this up because this is so much lighter than the other color. But I want you guys to see what I've got going on here. Okay, that there is some color change, and I'm, I'm not just working for nothing, that something's happening here, okay? And let's see, I think I want to go for, um, I'm going to go for some of the, hey, Sailor, okay? I've got to do some of this blue that's so pretty. And okay, I definitely want to get, I think, a clean brush for this. So I'm going to use one of my um, chip brushes, okay? And again, I always like to work the color onto 
um, my foam plate because that way you're not, um, you know, you're, you're working some of it off. And then just depending on how much you want to control it, uh, I wipe it off on my paper towel because, you know, I am one of those control freaks, okay? I like to be able to control right where I'm putting the color instead of the color controlling me because I really want to just put this blue more on the edges and the sides and kind of frame things out with it. So, uh, again, controlling... The drier your brush is, the more that you can control it. If it's too wet, you're going to find you got these big wet streaks and you're not going to be able to... Um, so I'm able to just kind of load even what I had just swirled onto the plate. And again, I'm still offloading, okay? But um, the drier your brush is, and sometimes it's just frustrating getting kind of used to the dry brush technique. Because I know people are like, oh, well, if you wipe it all off, you know, aren't you wasting paint? And, you know, uh, then you have nothing left on your brush and you have to reload your brush, you know, a lot more. But, you know, that's just the technique that if your brush isn't really dry, you can't control how soft, okay, and hopefully you guys can see that, how soft I've got that blue on the edge because I'm totally controlling it. Hi, Bianca. Yes, Bianca just lives down the street from me. You know, down the street here is like 35 miles. Might take us two hours to get there on a busy afternoon, but she's just down the street. <laughs> That's L.A. for you, okay? Orange County. You guys, can, we can live <laughs> within 20 to 30 miles of somebody, but it could take us at least an hour to an hour and a half to get there. That's just sometimes frustrating, not unless we travel at um, some weird hour of the day. Uh, one of my best friends is uh, lives in Corona, and I mean that is just an awful freeway to have to travel on during any kind of rush hour. So we we have a tendency to meet each other halfway um, and meet just because of the way the freeways are sometimes around here. I shouldn't say sometimes the way the freeways are all the time around here. <laughs> Even tonight, my errand that I t uh, had to run at three o'clock. Now, going south wasn't so bad, okay? I got there in probably about 15 minutes, which was really good. Um, it took 30 to get back, okay? <laughs> and that was just because of the traffic and going northbound for whatever reason. And, you know, Fridays are normally a little bit lighter. Everybody refers to them as Friday light. Sometimes I laugh because I don't think they're always that light on Friday, okay? Okay, so I'm just kind of, I hope you guys can see well. Let me bring you in maybe a little bit closer here, okay? Um, so I'm just coming back, and as, the, um, as these paints dry, they lighten up. So it's good to let things kind of lighten up and then come back and see how much more color you want to add. So I'm just kind of playing, like I said, I just kind of... Okay, sorry about that. I forgot to hit the Do Not Disturb button while I was doing this. And somebody just tried to call me, okay? Um, <laughs> hopefully he figures out that I'm in the middle of something and he doesn't call right back. Um, I knew I should have hit that, okay? So if you guys do lives um, on your own, um, you want to always go to your... Um, settings and hit the do not disturb that way phone calls can't come in and interrupt your lives like again okay so I might have to actually text him here and tell him I just can't take his phone call right now okay because I'm in the middle of something uh, maybe he'll get the hint <laughs> okay that's my boyfriend that's calling me okay uh, okay let's see oh Kelly yeah you live in an area that's easier to travel. Okay, so I want to get this up here and hopefully you guys can see more of the whole frame and see what I've done so far. Okay, I'm really, really liking this. You know, I've got the background. The original base is um, just a mermaid tail, okay? And then Old 57 is the light color that I dry brushed on. And then I'm shading and basically shadowing the outside edge with a um, hay sailor. And um, I really kind of like the way that looks. So I'm going to leave that alone, okay? I don't think I'm going to do too much more with that. 
Uh, I'm going to just kind of, my brush is so dry, I probably have nothing on it. So I'm just kind of going over the whole thing and maybe pulling in a little bit of that blue so it's just not on the edge, okay? And um, I'll show you one of the other um, frames that was done by uh, one of my retailers, okay? And it's still here because I haven't shipped it to her yet. Okay, I don't want to fall off my bar still. Um, so this one was done by Rhonda. Rhonda has her place three or RK3 designs in um, Seguin, Texas. And she stained hers first, okay? So she's got a dark color underneath, and then she built her colors over the top. Um, but this is just really fun how she's got even the dark color. Now, I didn't do that first, so I'm probably not gonna reveal my background wood just because it's just that cheap old pine. There's no real interest to it. Okay, I don't know why, but I guess we're, it's a little bit hot in here. I even got the fan going, it's just stuffy. Um, thank you, Jennifer. I like those colors, too. And, you know, sometimes you just got to go out of your, um, okay, I'm sweating, guys, okay? Um, sometimes you got to go out of your comfort zone with your colors and just try things, okay? Worst case scenario, if you hate it, it's another coat of paint or you can, you know, go back with um, water like I was kind of just blending and get rid of it, okay? You can make it disappear. So, it's not like you're going to be married to it for the rest of your life. Um, so I think it's always great to just get a palette that maybe is not all colors that are so complementary that would, you know, look like they would just be perfect on top of each other and just play. Uh, you're amazed at what kind of comes together and how fun they really look. Um, okay, so I think I'm okay with both of those backgrounds and I really want to show you guys um, the stamping rollers. So I think I'm going to switch and at least do one of those tonight with you and show you how I'm using them. And I'm going to try to be really, really basic um, with my description and how to use them. Um, I find that, you know, I feel like I've shown um, how to use them several times and I feel like, okay, is somebody going to get bored with me if I go through all the details of sharing how to use these rollers again? But then I still get questions on, you know, how they work and, and how, how to use them. So I'm going to try to be really basic. Um, I had somebody tell me the other day, she's been critiquing my page, and um, she says, you know, just because you've been doing this for 30 years, you can't assume that your audience knows everything that you're doing. So I think it's great that you guys do ask questions as I'm going because it makes me stop. I think, oh my gosh, you don't know this brush. You don't know this roller or this technique, okay? And no matter that it's simple to me, um, it might be new to you or just another way to actually do it. Uh, so you guys have to um, help me out. Okay, I am going to go run and get something very, very important because uh, <laughs> My battery is uh, starting to get low here, and I don't want to go to low battery mode. So give me one sec. I'm going to get back here with a charger. my office to get my charger and now I need to go grab the extension cord and plug my phone back in and I do not know why on earth my phone is so low today the battery I swear I charged my phone last night but as low as my battery is I I can't tell that I did, okay? This is crazy. Okay, so let me get rid of that, okay? I don't have to put the low battery mode on. Um, <laughs> now we can get back to this, okay? Because otherwise, this is was going to stop right in the middle. So, Kelly, you're not the only one that has to get up during your lives, okay? I'm always walking away during my lives. I don't care how prepared I am. It always seems you just all of a sudden go, oh, there's something else I can show you, okay? <laughs> uh, 
Um, okay, this is great. It seems like there's a few of you guys that know each other on here and that you're able to share with each other. And yes, it's a great Friday night just to be hanging out and painting, okay? Okay, so I believe, I believe, I believe I'm going to go black on this one um, with my roller. I think that's going to be kind of fun in the background. And did I bring both colors over here? Okay. <laughs> I might do old school. <laughs> oh, excuse me. <laughs> Got a cough. Um, I might do the old school, or I might do the black velvet, okay? And I'm not sure how dark I want to go, because remember I said I want this to kind of be the background? So I'm trying to look at the color as it's dried on the jar and decide how much contrast. Okay, I think I'm going to go black velvet, because I think... I think this one's going to probably dry almost too light for the contrast. <laughs> well, Anne, obviously, I don't have much of a life either, okay? I am hanging out with you guys tonight. <laughs> and we're going to catch a little water here. Oh. One of these days, this stupid little irritating cough I have will absolutely go away and make my life so much better. Okay, let's get with this. Okay, let's have some fun with the stamping rollers. And um, you guys, if you have questions about these stamping rollers, please, please ask, okay? And, you know, I just want to make sure I'm not going too fast or I'm not leaving something out because I really want you guys to to feel comfortable using these rollers and just having fun with them. They are so easy to play with. And like, you know, Kelly, even yesterday, pulled out the ostrich roller for the very first time on a live and used it. And she had never used one of my rollers before. So that was awesome, okay? You can just know that even the first time, you can be successful with them. Okay. <laughs> oh, my tray is nice and dirty. Okay. So here is um, a serving tray. Okay, so this is like a restaurant serving tray. And this is my favorite thing to use to load the rollers because it's flat. I don't like using a paint tray, a regular paint tray, because they're angled and they got all those little bumps and everything over them. Okay, so just go, I mean, if you can, okay, um, probably could find them at yard sales, might be able to find them used. Mine are nice and dirty now and uh, they're great okay and because i don't like to wash i cover it with press and seal and um, let me know you guys if i'm in this conversation or if you just all have fun together okay <laughs> and so press and seal is something i even use on my if i am using a regular paint tray sometimes i just use the liners sometimes i use my press and seal because it's great to just cover the surface and you have to clean less, okay? That's what I love to do is clean less. And um, I'm always trying to clean way, way, way less, okay? Uh, let's see, what do I need? Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is this is the handle, okay? When you get these, the handle's not put together. So I'm going to show you what it's going to look like when you get it and how much work you have to do to put them together. Okay, so when you get it, the metal bar is separate from the handle to start with, and all you do is put the um, put this through that, okay, whatever that part is, okay, I'm not thinking well tonight, it's getting late, um, and screw them together, okay. Okay, I'm going to scroll back here for a second. Oh, gosh, let's cancel that, and let me scroll back. Oh, yes, I will. I'll answer that for you, Michelle. Um, so Michelle was asking, um, and I'm just going to stop here and answer that for her right now. What's the difference between texture medium and embossing medium? Um, actually, we had a really big conversation about this a couple of weeks ago when I had a group of my retailers here, and I'm actually going to pull the embossing medium out of the line. Um, the embossing medium was really, it's a thick, thick, heavy texture um, 
that was great for embossing stencils. Okay, so I was creating a raised stencil design, and that was mainly the only purpose of that medium. Um, it's thick, it's harder to trowel on, so if you were trying to use it as a texture for like even a background, um, it's not as user friendly, okay? It's great for just troweling over a stencil, but that was mainly the only purpose. So I'm pulling it out of the line because the texture medium is so much easier to work with. And not only does it work great to trowel it out for the rollers or to brush it out as Kelly was showing you, uh, but it's also all fabulous, absolutely fabulous um, to emboss with and it dries really hard, okay? So you don't have to worry about it. Um, so I'm kind of thinking that we're gonna get rid of the embossing medium, just stay with the texture medium. So great question, and so glad that you did ask it. Okay, so that's how hard it is. Um, you got a screw and a nut, okay? And you just put those together and your handle is completely put together. And if you really want, you could probably get um, a tool here and tighten it down even more. Um, I don't really worry too much about it. And then on here, you have the bottom hole and the top hole. So the bottom hole is designed for the foam applicator. Okay, this is the um, tool or the roller that gets loaded with paint. And the top hole is for you to put your patterned roller in. But when I'm loading the, um, the foam roller to start with, I like it on the outside one because all I'm going to do right now is load my paint on it. So I always use it on the furthest away hole. Um, because it's easier to load it here than it is to load it um, halfway down the bar, okay? Uh, the other thing I'm going to do is pour out some paint. And I decided to go with this one, which is black velvet. And, okay, my cam looks pretty dirty here, so I'm going to pour some of this out. So this is a black that's not a jet black, okay? I think in the line, little black dress is the color that is like a solid black. Uh, my lid started to dry so you can kind of see that it's a lighter uh, black color which I think is going to look really good on top of um, the blue. Okay so I'm going to turn my camera down so you guys can see what I'm doing here. Okay so my tray I poured out my paint and I will normally just spread the paint out onto the tray a little bit so that I can load the whole roller okay. And depending on what paint you are using um, is going to depend on if you need to water it down. Um, I feel like the consistency of the DIY paint is pretty good, but I will always put a little bit of water on um, the roller first, okay, the foam. So just a little bit of water. I didn't uh, drench it by any means, okay? But I feel like it helps to um, load it better. So now, all I have to do is just roll this through the paint and I mean I'm not doing a huge project here so I don't even need to load all that's on there. Um, the other trick that I've found um, is if you find that like this little area here didn't get a lot of coverage and if I find any area that just seems where it doesn't have really good coverage of the paint in that area of the foam. Um, I use my brush and I just brush over those areas so that it's loaded because you don't want the um, foam to have a, a, a dry spot and that is where one part of the pattern is hitting, okay? Uh, so I normally just lay it down like this and just brush back and forth on it and make sure that it is loaded well and 100% loaded, okay? So there's no dry spots, no empty spots, so it will definitely um, load the design really well for you, okay? Um, at this point, it's just a matter of finding a pattern, okay? So I need to get back off of my stool here and grab one of the designs. And I don't know, let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, trying to decide which one I want to use, okay? I'm going to use one of the newer patterns, okay, that just came in. Um, we have a Moroccan damask, and then I also have one that is the Bohemian Rhapsody. And, ooh, hard choice, hard choice, okay. Is there anybody out there that would like to see one over the other? So Bohemian 
or Moroccan? Um, which one would you guys like me to use? Um, I will let you guys decide, okay? And as you guys are deciding and figuring out which one I should use, okay, so somebody get on there and tell me. Okay, I'm just going to put some of my paint away here that I put too much out onto my tray. Save some of this. Nobody likes to waste paint. Um, Bohemian, Damascus. Oh, you guys are splitting me, okay? <laughs> we, we need to have at least a tiebreaker now on, on one other opinion out there. Okay, and I got two Bohemians. Okay, so we're going to go with Bohemian on this one. And then I will use um, the Damascus on the other one. Painting my fingers here as we're going. Okay, so Bohemian is the winner. Okay, so you do tend to get a little messy, okay, when you guys are using these. And now I need to switch the foam to the back hole, okay? So I've now moved it, okay? So I've moved it to the, the pins are now in the back hole, the lowest hole, because this is going to feed the pattern, okay? And then the pattern is going to go out into the front one. But the easiest way to do this, you guys, is to lay it on a hard surface because when you're lifting that bar up you want to make sure that you haven't lost the pin for this one otherwise it's going to fall out okay but this is i mean realize it's not the cleanest thing that you get to do i always tend to get some paint on me when i am uh, moving the uh, foam roller in okay i haven't found an absolute way to do it where i don't get something on me so just be prepared that, you know, there is a little bit of a messiness to this. Uh, the other thing I always like to do is because the pattern's not loaded, and even if I spin the pattern, it's not going to load consistently, okay? You can see some areas that have caught some of the paint and other areas that um, still don't have any paint on them. So what I like to do, and I'm just kind of trying to clear off a spot over here, you guys. Um, my tables are covered with um, rosin paper. And the other thing that's always great to use is, okay, I'm going to clean this off so I don't pick up a bunch of dirt, okay, um, is to put down um, packing paper or unprinted newsprint. I'm trying to see if I have any back here. I think I moved it all. But something that you can just go ahead and roll, okay, and as I'm doing that, it loaded the entire pattern okay that's how i load the roller is to roll it on some kind of paper where that way the entire design is now completely loaded okay so if i spin this around there's no part of the pattern that doesn't have paint on it so you want to pre-load it before you actually use it on your project and that's why i've always got beautiful paper around here okay <laughs> And now, now, okay, drum roll, please. Now we are going to roll my project. Okay, I'm going to stand up so that I got a little bit better angle. <laughs> so I move my stool out of my way here. And I'm trying to get you guys, okay, my extension cord is in the way. But the extension cord is very important right now because it is charging the battery so that we do not get cut off in the middle of this. Okay, so there's also the whole thing about um, push or pull, okay? And I find that sometimes it's just, you gotta figure out which is the best direction to go. When I say push or pull, that means either push the roller or pull the roller, okay? And you gotta figure out if there's a, a more comfortable way to do it. I just sometimes find, depending on um, what I'm doing and if I'm on a wall or if I'm on a flat surface one direction sometimes works better than the other okay I think I'm going to go ahead and pull this or actually I might push it okay so my roller hope you guys can see this my roller is bigger than the project okay so all the rollers are seven inches long and my sign is only five so I'm going to try to get this at an angle and hope you guys can still see but I want to try to get this where I am centering the pattern, okay? Um, that I'm not off to one side or the other. And I'm looking at the edge 
so that I can try to make sure that I'm going straight. Oh my gosh, that looks so incredible. How fun, how fun, how fun. Okay, so there we go, you guys. Huh? <laughs> now, like I said, this is a, um, a black color that is not solid black or not, not as deep as a, a true black and it'll dry a little bit lighter. Now when I started, I was a little lighter handed, okay? And over here, it got a little bit darker, but again, I'm doing something rustic, so I'm not looking for perfection, okay? But doesn't that look awesome? So I'm really hoping that it dries down a little bit lighter, and if it doesn't, I am gonna take a squirt bottle and some cheesecloth, and I'm gonna lighten that whole design, because again, I really want this to be the background, and I'm gonna come over with my, um, my let my words okay because uh, again I said I really wanted the the words to kind of pop um, so I was going for the look I was going for and what we've got so far is not exactly right so we might have to distress that okay as I pop out of the screen again okay hopefully you guys can still hear me okay let's go ahead and do this one too now you guys what I do when I'm using um, when I'm using the rollers like this, and I've got that one just got dirty, okay? Um, and then I'm going to stop here for a second. I'm going to read to you guys. So I'm going to pull you back up here with me. Um, oh, it's not hard. Um, these were really easy to do on something. I mean, I wasn't feeling like it was wobbling at all. So Mary, it's, it's easy to do, but this is five and that's seven. So it's not too far off. If you were doing something that was maybe three inches and you were trying to use the roller, um, I mean, I still have done that. I've done some picture frames that were, you know, just a wide flat frame and it worked really good. I mean, you sometimes just got to use a section of it, um, but they do work really well. Um, I'm not finding that I'm tippy at all. Okay. Uh, but um, what I was going to tell you guys um, also on these is I don't want to like wash out all the black paint right now because I'm not sure if I might use this um, a roller again that color in the next day or so. Uh, so what I do is I, I'm going to definitely wash the, um, the pattern roller because this here will be, I mean these are easy to wash off and quickly. Whereas the, the foams, okay, those suck up a lot of paint and it takes a little longer to clean them out. So um, I'm definitely going to be working on stuff like this uh, next week. So I'm just using my leftover press and seal that I used to line up, you know, line the tray and I've wrapped it, okay. Um, yes, everything just wa washes mainly just with water and I don't even very seldom do I ever even use soap Okay, not unless something starting to stain pretty good, but um, The foam roller is all wrapped up. I can put this in a baggie and stick it in the fridge for the weekend It'll be fine next week. Okay, so um, If I'm not sure I'm going to use that color again. I just leave it. This one is uh, metallic silver Okay from a few days ago and again, I know it's fresh in there. I can see the paint's even fresh. Um, I know I'm going to use this next week, so I'm again not. I'm not washing them yet. Okay, I'm kind of gotten a little bit lazy with this, but I'm not washing those yet. <laughs> okay, this I will wash. Okay, because this one is easy to wash off. Uh, okay, speaking of washing, okay, and my hands are getting really great here. Okay, let's load this up again with some press and seal. I'm going to change colors and get a clean foam. Um, and that's another thing, you guys, that um, the handle, okay, so when you, when you buy the handle applicator, it's the metal bar, the handle, and you get the foam that comes with it. So you get all three pieces that create that, the handle applicator. And you can buy... Um, replacement foams for it. So you can buy these individually. So you can have several of these to use with the, uh, the rollers. Um, so that way if you're changing colors, um, it's easy, okay? You can put one in a baggie and uh, just go forward. Okay, so I've got a clean handle because I think even that handle has some black on it. Uh, now my eye itches, so I'm probably gonna have black on my face. Okay, this is one of the, um, oops, this is not the right one, okay. 
Um, that's the older style handle. Okay, so I still have some of these around. This is just the older style handle. And I'm going to use this one right now so I can load um, another foam, okay? And let's see what color would I want. Okay, so this is mermaid tail. Okay, I want this one. I think this is one that's going to come out even more close. Okay, I'm going to use sea glass um, for the roller. Um, oh, you're Tanya, are you asking where you buy the rollers? I'll put a link in here. I do sell all of them, okay? So you can go to my website, which is artisticpaintingstudio.com, but I'll put the direct links in here for you guys. Um, all the stamping rollers are under the decorative roller link that says stamping rollers, and all the, um, I'm going to grab this, all of the other um, impression or what we call imprint rollers, um, these are under collection two, okay? Uh, but there's tons and tons of rollers on my website, so you can find all of them. Um, so this one has mermaid tail in the background. Old 57 is the lighter color that is dry brushed on. And then the dark color on the edges is the um, hay sailor. Hay sailor. <laughs> um, and I'm going to use sea glass, which I know is going to be really, really close. So this one I think is actually going to come out more in that whole tone on tone theory that I was going for. Okay, let me find a clean brush. Excuse my head in front of the camera. Okay, we're gonna pour out some paint here. And yeah, I'm a neat freak, okay, you guys? I wipe off all my edges, okay, so that I could get my lids back on. Um, so I'm, I'm very clean about that when I'm painting. Otherwise, your lids, or if the edge of the jar gets so filled with paint, you can't get your lids back on. Okay, again, uh, okay, let's, let's see what I'm doing here. Sorry about that. That moved way faster than I thought. Okay, so I'm just brushing the paint out onto the tray because I want the paint to be as wide as the roller, okay, so that it loads uh, pretty even. I'm going to take my squirt bottle filled with water and just give it a little bit of a squirt there just to moisten it. Oh, thank you, Michelle. That was sweet of you to put my link on there. Okay, and then we're going to load this baby up, okay? And you guys, I'm not worried about all these rollers that I'm loading because we've got a project that we're going to start next week where we are going to be um, rolling all the craft bags that we are taking to the pinners, okay? So anybody that's going to the pinners conference and signs up for my class and orders, pre-orders or orders the kit uh, for the workshop, uh, your project, your whole kit is going to be in a really cute bag that already has one of the stamping patterns on it, okay? And then we're going to bring a bunch of them, um, um, just a demo in the booth with, too. Okay, let me move this out of the way. And, oops, before that, I do that, I like to always use this to load, too. Okay, um, we are going to use the other new pattern, um, the Moroccan on this one, okay? So I'm going to move the foam to the very bottom hole. And hopefully you can see, okay, I'm going to go to a little bit of a side. So when I'm opening the, um, the bar to get the um, pattern roller in here, I'm squeezing, okay, my fingers are squeezing that pin and holding on to it so I don't lose, um, I don't lose the foam, okay? So I'm holding on to that as I'm squeezing in and putting in the pattern, okay? So that's my little trick, okay, that I'm holding on to all of that. Okay, if I've got a clean finger, I'm going to swipe back here, and I want to read somebody's question. Um, Kelly, oh, good question. I don't have any classes coming up for um, Southern California right now because my entire fall is travel. Um, I'm going to be in Indianapolis um, right after Labor Day weekend. And after that, I'm going to be in Dallas, Texas, and then I'm going to be in Arizona, and then hopefully I'm going to be in Fort McMurray in Canada. 
and that just kind of took up the entire fall. So I'm starting to work on my calendar and um, I'll make sure that we have at least one class um, coming up probably early um, 2018, okay? That sounds like it's so far away, but it's really not for me, okay? Um, I mean, I could schedule something in December, but I don't really think there'd be a lot of people that would be wanting to um, come take a class in December, okay? So you might have to wait for a while. In the meantime, though, you can always go to my website, and I have tutorials on there, and I do have um, a lot of... Um, couple of videos that you can buy and we're working on more of them. Oh, Kelly, do you not know about the General Finishes Conference coming up? That's in Indianapolis, um, the 5th through the 7th. Okay, so again, you guys, my roller needs to be loaded. Okay, there's not enough paint on there. So you just roll onto some kind of paper surface, okay? And I'm just rolling a couple of times and I'm just making sure that that whole pattern is loaded which is awesome. Oh, who's going? Okay, so SJ. SJ Price is going. I will see you there. I'm so excited. Okay, so this time I'm going to pull the last one. I Oops. Okay, so let me get that off of there. Um, this was just, <laughs> just washed, okay? And I'm lifting. <laughs> let me see the show you guys what I'm doing. Okay, I'm lifting up the... Um, the plastic, okay, the rubber, okay, and letting it drain because water got stuck underneath the rubber, okay. So that's where that water came from. And let me find a clean paper towel here. And I'm just going to blot that water off, okay. And that is one thing that's definite. When you guys wash these, um, they definitely can get water stuck underneath the rubber. So I normally will shake them, okay. And, okay, let's just make sure that's a little bit drier. I might have to, Ooh, I got water dripping everywhere. Okay, I'm gonna unplug something here and plug this hair dryer in real quick. Just because I'm not sure how well the paint is gonna go over that wet spot. So, okay, we're gonna unplug the camera for a second. I think I got enough battery to last a minute or two. <laughs> and plug the blow dryer in. And just get that to dry down. Sorry about the noise. Okay, I just want that to dry down a little bit, okay? Okay, that's disappearing quick. Okay, just wanted to do that because I didn't want the water to resist anything, okay? Oh, yeah, you've got boot camp. I know. All of our lives are busy. Always something going on. <laughs> I didn't realize how many things I was like getting ready to do all at once. And it's like, okay, they're all, all during the same, same time frame. Okay, because I have uh, sat here for a minute, I wanna make sure the paint's fresh, okay? So I'm gonna roll again, just to make sure it's loaded and that the paint is fresh, okay? And then I'll make sure I got everything out of the way and that you guys can see, you can see, you can see. Um, I'm just again trying to make sure that I am centering, okay, and centering the pattern over, okay, it's hard to do it from, from this angle, okay, I have to say I can't see as well, okay, so I'm going to start the design and then I'm going to flip this back over this way, okay, that way I can see the edge and make sure that I am getting there we go. That came out great. Okay, this is going to be really, really light. Um, this might be perfect, though, as far as that tone on tone on tone that I want it. It went on really, really, really light, okay? Ooh, but that's pretty. You can see it. Now, this is exactly the effect that I was going for, okay? Is that tone on tone. So that is going to be beautiful, and it's going to be subtle, and it's going to be a nice background, and whatever stencil I pick out to put on top of that, um, that's really going to show well, okay? So I'm thinking I might even use metallic silver on top of this. We'll see. Uh, but I can be really bold, or I can be real subtle even with the words, but that is going to be awesome. It already has a nice distressed look, okay? Um, so pretty much other than sometimes getting in the 
correct angle, okay? <laughs> um, oh, thank you. It is a really pretty pattern. And this one is called um, Moroccan Damask. And um, I don't know if it's ended up on the computer yet, okay? I just sent, oh, I just did all the photography and sent the pictures over to the webmaster. And I don't know if she's got them loaded yet. But she's really normally good about things like that because I've only, only like sent her like four or five different new things to add for just the rollers. So hopefully she gets those added quickly. Now, if by chance you're wanting to order these and they're not on the website yet, um, two things. If you're ordering other stuff, you can always just add a note in the message section of the order form and say, please add this to my order, okay? And we'll be more than happy to do that. Um, or you can call us. We'll take your phone call anytime and help you out. Um, so um, sometimes I always feel bad showing some of the new stuff when we haven't gotten it all on the internet, but um, they're available. <laughs> they are available to order, so um, you can still get them. You just might have to call me, okay? You might have to actually call me and talk to me, okay? Um, you'll either get me or maybe one of my assistants, okay? But give us a call and we'll help you out. Okay, I think, I think that's about all the fun I can possibly handle for tonight, you guys. <laughs> um, I feel really great, though, because let me go grab the other one. I want to see how that's dried. Okay, this one's definitely more bold. Um, but this is still a great look, okay? And I might come in here and um, distress this one a little bit, or I might even keep it bold and just let the, the pattern just really pop, okay? You know, sometimes when you're making these, you just don't always know um, exactly how they're going to turn out and which direction you might end up going. Um, so committee's out on this one. I don't know. I might just leave it as it is, but we'll see. Definitely, this one here is light and has that whole look that I was going for with that real subtle background. So I'm definitely going to come in here with a stencil and probably write hope or joy, or love, or peace, or something like that over the top of it. Or maybe we might even do another friends one, okay? Because uh, we've got the fun friends stencil too. Uh, but those, hey, I got two done. Okay, for me to get anything done around here, it is so hard, okay? <laughs> That's why evenings work so best. Um, I don't know which one I like best either. They really are fun. But those are two of the newest patterns that have come in. Um, oh, what is the name of this one? This one is Bohemian Rhapsody, and this one is um, Moroccan Damask. Um, so those are the two newer ones. And I'll try to um, write some names on here and some links for you guys in case you're looking for stuff. Um, but, you know, I just want to say thank you guys for joining me um, on this Friday night. You know, it's always fun to hang out with you guys and um, get to know everybody a little bit better who's joining me. Um, if you guys asked a question, I know I repeat myself all the time, but, but if you did ask a question and by chance I missed it, um, I'll go through and make sure that I actually post the question on the thread or the, post the answer, okay, for you on the thread. Um, and I'm, I'm pretty good about that. If I missed it and for a day or two, then ask it again, okay, because uh, I am really am good about um, going through and doing that. Oh. <laughs> You see a silhouette of a man. And which one? Which one? Which one, Kelly? <laughs> huh. Not seeing it. I don't think you see it in this one, do you? They're all so fun. Sometimes you can see things in the patterns. Um, okay, but I think I'm going to go finish up some paperwork. I'm going to call my boyfriend back, who probably wonders what in the hell has happened to me tonight. Okay and um, take care of some other things and uh, you guys enjoy your friday night um, and i know i'll be back here next week and probably show you guys some of the fun stuff i'm doing on the other signs because i'm going to get out the texture medium and do the other rollers on those um, but thank you guys god bless have a wonderful evening we'll talk soon